Okay, okay. welcome everybody. Um, I'm gonna take off the mask. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us today due to this pandemic, still practicing all the different protocols. So I'll take my mask off. We'll wait for Jack to take off that colorful mask if it, when he so desires. Um, but we will get started. Uh, so <clears throat> again, thanks for everyone to join us. Thanks for taking the spacing. Uh, people can't see that, but I can. So thank you for, uh, for dealing with this. Um, my colleagues also are on the phone, as they will, as they will say. Steve Chukri, uh, if, you know, I noticed when watching some of these meetings, people probably were wondering why I keep looking at my feet or at my shoulder, but it's basically so I can see my two colleagues on uh, a laptop up here too. So. Um, before we get started on uh, number one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this over to uh, Supervisor Bill Gates, who is sponsoring the invocation and pledge today. So Bill, uh, welcome and you got the mic. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to introduce uh, the individual who's gonna be doing the prayer and pledge for us today. One of our superstars in District 3, Matt Grass. Not only is Matt the budget director for Governor Ducey, uh, but in addition to that, he's also an elected member of the Madison uh, District School Board, as well as being a representative on Maricopa County Planning and Zoning Commission. So he's a busy guy, and even with all that going on, he's taken the time to join us today. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and really excited to have Mr. Gress with us today. Okay, uh, welcome Mr. Gress. I'm gonna ask everyone to please stand. And Mr. Gress, go right ahead. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, dear Lord, please guide our elected officials and staff through these turbulent times. Amidst the stormy seas they face, full of uncertainty and worry, we ask you to still the waters and make their path clear. We know that our county is doing everything they can to keep us safe. May you grant all of us the grace and understanding to be resilient, to keep the faith, to not lose hope, and to take comfort that you, our creator, are in control. We pray in your son's holy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. As everyone takes their seats, uh, Mr. Gress, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. I appreciate your thoughts and your patriotism. So thanks for joining us today. Okay, uh, we will now move on to the roll call of Ms. Fran McCarroll da that's downstairs from me. Um, will you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Sellers? Here. Supervisor Chukri? Supervisor Chukri? You're, you're on mute. Can you not hear me? Yeah, there you okay. go. Go ahead. Thank you. Here. Okay. Supervisor Gates. Here. Supervisor Gallardo. Here. And Chairman Hickman. Here. So thank you, Fran. We will go on to item number four. And I want to, Scott, can you come up here for a second? I want to ask you something. So item number four is the pet showcase uh, by Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. Uh, meet Maggie. Maggie is a two-year-old Chihuahua. She came to us as a stray. We don't have a lot of information, but we do know that Maggie loves to be around people and is very adventurous. She loves to seek out new places to run and play. Maggie also loves to be held and cuddled. Maggie is available for only $25, which includes her license fee and all vaccinations. Maggie is ID number 4455371. Through the end of August, we are participating in the NBC Universal Clear the Shelters event. All adult dogs are only $25 and all adult cats can go home at no charge. You can see all the pets available for adoption and make an adoption appointment at petsmaricopa.gov. Um, so that's a cute little picture. 
So if you'll just take a moment to look on the screen and see that phone number and her ID. Cindy, for your service to Maricopa County. For your, you're, you're getting a little dog here. Okay. It's our way of saying thank you, okay? You, you get to take him home. Is that an action picture or is that a triplet uh, dog? I don't, it looks the same. So take three home if you'd like, Cindy. You'll have the time now. Okay, we'll move on to item number five. So this is, what, uh, this is what's horrible about this pandemic because we're all separated and I, I hate losing good people, uh, but, but when it comes to retirement and getting on with her life after such a, a sterling career, uh, I wish we could all get together. I, I know my colleagues, you've worked with all of us uh, in different areas, and I know that they'd love to be here uh, for this too. So, um, sorry, um, blame the blame the pandemic. But I'm glad you're I'm glad you're here. We have a special uh, presentation and an appointment to make. Uh, as you can see by the agenda, this next item is to accept the resignation of Cindy Kolzinski, our county librarian. After 16 years with the library district, Cindy has decided to retire effective September 1st. Excuse me, first. We want to make a few moments to recognize a few of her accomplishments during her time with us. Back in 2004, Cindy started her career with us at the Maricopa County Library District as the Youth Services Manager at the North Valley Regional Library. In 2006, she began working in branch operations before quickly stepping into the role of Deputy Director. A short five years later, in 2011, Cindy was appointed as the District Director and County Librarian. During her time, Cindy took the library district to new heights. She successfully collaborated with 15 local municipalities to implement the countywide library assistance program. She also developed numerous intergovernmental agreements, which led to the opening of Asante Library and the upcoming opening of the new Gila Bend Library. Cindy set the standard for creative, engaging, and customer-focused library services that has led us to multiple NACO awards every year. Under her leadership, the board supported the elimination of overdue fines that reinstated library access to thousands of Maricopa County residents. The scope and impact of the libraries to our communities is tremendous. Cindy improved collection management and oversaw the circulation of nearly 8 million physical items and over 2 million digital items annually. When COVID-19 hit, she spearheaded new ways to ensure safe access to library services through curbside pickup book a librarian and the installation of the self-serve kiosk. From April through June, over 47,000 patrons were served by car or walk-up services uh, during this pandemic. That's very important. Cindy is respected and admired by her staff as well as by all of us. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm gonna put you on the hot seat here in a little bit, but. Got to do the business of the board first. I will consider a motion to accept Ms. Kolosinski's resignation. Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to make a motion, but I'd like to make a couple of comments first. Okay. Um, you know, I when I got on this board, I immediately uh, visited and toured some of our library facilities. And I, like a lot of people, thought, you know, is the need for libraries diminishing with us moving into a digital age? And I have been so impressed with what our libraries have done to adapt to the needs of the communities they're serving. Uh, and in every, you know, each community may have different needs, but they've been listening to the community and adapting to whatever the community needs are in that area. You know, in addition to that, my chief uh, reminded me that there was a time when the county and municipal partners were always fighting over funding and other issues. And Cindy, when Cindy became the leader, she was able to build a coalition with our municipalities, which is certainly paying dividends to this day. So with that, uh, even though I hate to do it, I will make a motion to accept uh, her resignation. Great, thank you, Jack. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, I will second it with a comment, but I think I'll make my comments uh, after we do our vote. Okay, um, so if that's good with, I'm looking at my colleagues, so I'll, I will open the floor to that. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, Steve Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, like my good friend Jack, uh, once we got on this board, um, real quickly got to, to learn more about our library district and the, the services that are provided in our community. And I have a small town out there in the Southwest Valley. I always call it my little diamond in the rough. Um, but this small town, and I actually brought a couple of newspapers from the Gila Bend area. I want to talk about that when we do our, our supervisor reports. But nonetheless, uh, here's a small community. Uh, we, and by the way, we've all driven right through this community on our way somewhere. We've driven right through this community. But if you just go right off the highway there, uh, there's, there's, there's neighborhoods, there's families, there's around 2,000 people that live in the town of Gila Bend. And uh, uh, right in the middle of that town is a library, and it's our Gila Bend Library. And I have been out there many, many times. We've done office hours out there in the library, but it is a central point for that community. It is a place for uh, the, the kids and families to go, uh, to have access not only uh, to the internet, but access to books and magazines, a place for a lot of families just to go and get away. Uh, we take it for granted as we live in the metropolitan area, you know, if we wanted to get away, we can easily skip over to a mall or a shopping center or, or go to a, even a Starbucks or, or wherever just to relax and get out of the house. But the town of Gila Bend doesn't have that luxury. So they have what is our library. And Cindy has done so much to really spotlight it and provide the services that are needed. Uh, if it wasn't for that library, uh, you're looking around 2,000 families that literally uh, would have been cut off to not only the internet, but just access to basic reading books. Um, and, that's, and that's what makes this library so special. I think it's more special, and I hate to say this, but it's, it's probably uh, the, the most special library we have in Maricopa County because of the unique location, because of the unique challenges facing Gila Bend. Uh, I just want to thank Cindy from the bottom of my heart. I've been out there many occasions. I talked to so many families out there, and, and they are just so excited. If you go out there and you, you talk to any, any, uh, any, anybody out there, any family out there, they'll, they'll real quickly bring up the library. They know Gila Bend for the library. It is a central location for families and kids. Um, if it wasn't for that library, uh, you probably have some kids out there doing some stuff they probably shouldn't be doing, unfortunately. I see the sheriff here. He'd be really busy out there. <laughs> but that library is a safety net. It really is. And, and uh, I can't explain how important it is. And uh, so I just want to thank you, Cindy, not only for your service uh, for all our library facilities, but particularly in the Gila Band, because I know it's just a unique spot. It really is. The, the, the digital divide out there is so massive, and, and, and so many families just rely to going to that library just to brush up on their resumes, apply for jobs, for kids to do their homework, and, and that internet side of it is so important, as well as the books as well. They're just as equally important to that community. So thank you, Cindy, for the bottom of my heart for everything you've done, and a special thank you, I know, from the town of Gila Bend for everything you have provided there. So thank you so much. Great, thank you, Steve. Great comments. Uh, Supervisor Gates, do you have anything? Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I really did want to vote against this motion, but uh, <laughs> I will respect uh, Cindy's wishes. She's gonna be greatly missed. Um, Jack and Steve have, have put it very well, but I would just add my perspective, which has been the incredible uh, institution that the North Valley Library is an anthem. Cindy's been such a big part of that. It is it is just much like there in Gila Bend. It is a meeting place. It is a place where uh, people get programming, where they're able to get the books and other materials that they want. It's co-located with Boulder Creek High School. So again, really a an important uh, meeting place in the North Valley. But beyond that, too, I really want to recognize Cindy for, for being an innovator. I mean, she's truly an innovator in so many ways, uh, both before the pandemic and during the pandemic, continuing to be relevant, 
uh, and becoming more relevant because of the work that Cindy and her team has done. And it's going to be a big loss for Anthem and a big loss for all of Maricopa County. But Cindy, I wish you the very best and congratulations on your retirement. Great, thank you, Supervisor Gates. Um, Supervisor Chukri. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I echo the comments that have already been spoken. Uh, I would simply add that uh, Cindy has a unique quality that uh, of course we see in all of our employees in Maricopa County, but the one quality that struck me when I first met her eight years ago was her passion for the job. Uh, it was her passion to, to do what she, whatever she could do to make our libraries very innovative, uh, which she has done. Uh, and everyone thinks of a librarian sitting at a, a front desk with a very, you know, very dressed for properly and glasses down on the, the tip of their nose. And, and, and Cindy is exactly what Mr. Gage just said, is an innovator. And that innovation has, has sprung uh, across my district, not only up in Fountain Hills, where I spent a lot of time uh, going over our library there, but most importantly, I think in the William Gateway, the Williams Gateway Airport, uh, the, the library we established there some time ago and the unique nature of how uh, we utilized it and operated it, uh, really uh, the credit for that goes all to her. So uh, not only is she an innovator, she's passionate about what she does. And Cindy, you will certainly and have uh, left your mark on Maricopa County and it will continue uh, to dwell with us and, and all the services we provide as it relates to our library. So thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. So uh, what's, what's uh, funny is everyone's talking about their favorite children, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's hard as a parent uh, to, to pick one, right? We love them all um equally uh but cindy that's what i've always gotten out of you i've always wondered like what's what's her favorite library and seeing this that that must be true for all of you guys too because we keep mentioning libraries and what, what you've done for each one uh you know gila bend matches up totally with what what the library is in Aguila for that community that far-flung community that we've been out there together uh surprise I have a feeling White Tanks is because you moved half of your library staff out there, so that's that's a beautiful location. But what well, one thing certain, I, I'll never forget the when I was appointed to this board the very first time, the very first meeting I ever had uh, outside to see what the county does was was the uh, was the library in El Mirage, and that's where I got a chance to meet you, your staff, and I came in with some of those same things. You know, where does library fit into a digital world? And for the last seven years, you have morphed that uh, to be a real community hub, as Steve has touched on, with the kiosks. People can do county business in there now uh, that you made happen. So um, I just want to thank you for, for your hard work and all that. It's become this library over, at least in my time period, uh, a different but a, a wonderful thing for our community. So um, being that, um, I've already had a recent COVID test because of uh, the ranch and making sure everybody is staying safe. I'm gonna touch your plaque because I think I'm good uh, because I'm gonna give it to you. This is the plaque thanking you for your service. But in order to get this plaque, uh, you need to come up and have a few remarks. <laughs> Sorry, putting you to work, Cindy. You've never known me to pass up an opportunity to promote <laughs> libraries, so thank you. So, Chairman, Supervisors, I really appreciate the comments. It has been an honor to lead this organization. Um, those accomplishments you mentioned, though, is because of the team behind me. So, they are the most incredible, innovative, and hardworking team. They have pivoted, and they've let me lead, but also they've trusted me. When I've had some really crazy ideas, they stood behind me and said, well, if it doesn't work, we know she'll pivot again and we'll get it done, but um, it's, it's to their credit that this library district is not only recognized across the county, but the state and the nation. So thank you for all your support over the years. Great, thank you, Cindy. Well, mm -hmm. I am going to invite uh, my colleagues down. We will personally space as much as we can. <laughs> Hopefully we have a panoramic uh, picture if anyone would like to take some <laughs> pictures of uh, Cindy for her staff. Uh, yes, okay, as Steve's grabbing this. So it'll be a timely picture. We'll have we masks on, but when we get all set up, I'd like to take the masks off and get, get a picture with you, Cindy, so. 
We you guys need to wear your mask too out on Cyberland. So we have no confidence in the tests you took, Mr. Hickman. <laughs> <laughs> we would normally give you a hug. Yeah, I totally understand. Yep. How are we going to do this? So I'm going to do that. Perfect. Um, So we've got a couple of pictures from my colleagues, so we can just uh, airbrush you in in those in those other spots. So you know, take give me a selfie and on this day, and and we'll get it we'll get it in the picture. Okay, uh, now I would like to briefly briefly recess the board of supervisors and convene as the library district board of directors to consider agenda item number 137 regarding the appointment of a new library director. Before I call for a vote on this item, let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Jeremy Reeder. For the past nine years, Jeremy has partnered with Cindy as the deputy director to help make so many of those great things that we just talked about happen. Jeremy came to his position at the library district with over 20 years of professional experience as a librarian, including 13 years of executive level management experience. Like Cindy, he also started at the library district in 2004. In addition to participating in the planning and execution of the major product, projects over the last several years. He was also instrumental in implementing the Dewey List model within the libraries. Uh, Jeremy has supervised the design and construction as well as the remodel of, all, of 11 library branches and during the process developed open collaborative relationships in the community. He has presented nationally at the American Library Association, Public Library Association, and statewide at the Arizona Library Situ uh, Association. Although Cindy will be a tough act to follow, we have a full faith and confidence that Jeremy is ready for the new challenge. So, that being said, uh, I would like to call for a motion regarding this appointment. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vice Chairman. I move to appoint Jeremy Reeder as the Maricopa County Library District Director, effective September 2nd, 2020. Great, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Supervisor Gallardo. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Jeremy, welcome to this uh, new uh, position. Um, I know that you're gonna do well. Uh, you've trained under the best. You know all the people. Uh, you know where all the skeletons in the closets are. <laughs> um, and I know that you're gonna do a, a fantastic job. So I'm not gonna put you on the spot yet. Well, when, once you have some more accomplishments, then I'll, I'll put you on the spot at that point. But um, I just wanted to thank you, Jeremy, because ever since I've been in this position, I'll reflect back on, I was having a troubling uh, situation that was occurring in Sun City. And uh, I believe that Cindy gave you the leadership on that, on that issue many years ago. And um, it, we came out smelling like a rose. Uh, egg farmers are used to smelling something different, and I was prepared, getting prepared for that, but you, got, you really did a good job engaging the community and, and letting people understand the issue, and we got to a great situation. And I know it's great because I've heard nothing about it for the last six years. So I appreciate your hard work in that. So you're gonna be great. So we will now recess the Library District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. And I do believe that you owe Cindy lunch today. Good, okay. Um, 
I'm going to ask, I think Jen Prokorski, is has she joined the meeting or is she she on the on the phone? I know she's operating remotely as well. She is on she's on the Chairman Hickman, I am here. Okay, great. Uh, we are now uh, moving to the consent agenda under planning and zoning. Um, item number six, Camelback Place at Dysert. Number seven, uh, Trethan Farms. Number eight, Southwest Barricades. Number nine, Upland RV and Boat Storage. Uh, number 10, 18507 West Van Buren Street. Number 11, Fry's Shops Monuments Signs. Uh, number 12, Arizona Olympian Gymnastics. We are going to skip item 13 for a moment. And item number 14, NWC, Sossaman Road and Santan Boulevard. The, now, the board will now consider planning and zoning consent items, uh, agenda items six through 14, but we will be skipping 13 uh, at this moment. We're gonna pull that one off for a moment. So looking for a motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Great. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. We'll now go under. Uh, let's see. Let's see how we're going to do this. Well, now, okay. So item number thirteen. Let's go back to item number thirteen um, because we had a letter come in. Uh, and I was not aware of it. <clears throat> so we were able to spend a little bit of time uh, and I hope uh, make things better. So if uh, I could ask um, Jen Pokorski to fill us in a little bit on the situation on 303 and Olive. Yes, thank you, Chairman Hickman and members of the board. Z2019-129 is an application for a zone change from Rural 43 to Commercial 2 with a CUPD overlay to vary height and size requirements for planned billboards along the 303. This property is located at the southeast corner of Olive and the 303, and it's currently being used as a wholesale nursery. So this zone change will allow a future retail component to the nursery, equipment rentals, and billboards. We did receive a letter of opposition from a property owner who is concerned about maintenance of Lawrence Lane, which runs through the nursery toward the southern portion of the nursery. There are about three homes that are on Lawrence Lane, and the opposition is one of the homeowners and he is concerned about the trucks for the nursery that are impacting that road. The um, Planning and Zoning Commission voted to approve this item and uh, unanimously the vote was six to zero. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, Fran, uh, real quickly, is there I believe that there was a notice filed that would would speak if necessary, um, but the uh, but the issue that the the person had on the in his letter had had to do with exactly what uh, Jen just stated, right? Uh, traffic on this road. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, and so Jen, um, I uh, know that you've been working on this in the last 24 hours, so. Uh, is there a, is there a stip then that uh, will be placed on uh, to to hopefully uh, get rid of those or maybe not get rid of them but at least mollify those concerns or start working on those concerns? Yes, Chairman Hickman, members of the board did contact the applicant as well about the concerns, and I would recommend adding an additional condition J. That, that states the applicant shall submit a long-term maintenance plan for Lawrence Lane with any commercial plan of development application. We believe that will address the maintenance concerns that the property owner has. Okay. Okay, so um, with that, uh, and there's, it doesn't look like then, I've just looked at Fran, there's no one, there's no one waiting to make a comment on this item. 
That's correct, Mr. Chairman. I have just checked with our moderator for the meeting, and she said there is no one asking to speak on this item. Um, Mr. Popey that sent the letter, I believe that this was his concern okay. dealing with Lawrence Lane. Okay. And it looks like we're making Mr. plans. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Mr. Popey just raised his hand. Okay. Uh, can you please, uh, can you please put him on? Mr. Popey, you are live? Y yes. Uh, my, my real biggest concern is not just the maintenance. It's just the heavy traffic going up and down Lawrence Lane. They have two other, uh, entrances to the property. Is, is there any way of just making them use those instead of Lawrence Lane? Yeah, uh, that's, it's, from what I have found out, Lawrence Lane is, is a private road. Well, we, I, all I can say is we'll, we'll do our best with that situation. I also know that there's some construction going on out there right now with all of, is that, is that correct? Uh, yes, the construction's not related to Lawrence Lane, no. Well, sometimes we all find the traffic on all the traffic on Lawrence Lane is uh, forest nursery or forest uh, equipment rentals. Okay. Well, I believe that my thoughts are while working on this with this uh, with this stipulation. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna go a long way towards uh, helping the issue out. So, um, with that, uh, thank you for joining us today, uh, Fran McCarroll. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Popey, were you able to hear the stipulation that Ms. Pekorski has recommended to the board? I'm sorry, one more time. Were you able to hear the stipulation that Ms. Pekorski has recommended to the board, stipulation J? Uh, I don't have the stipulation J uh, where I'm able to see it. But if you are recommending uh, utilizing one other entrance other than Lawrence Lane, I, I'll, I agree with that. Could, could we have her read it again? Um, Ms. Pekorski, could you read the, the stipulation again, please? <clears throat> sure, Chairman Hickman, members of the board. The stipulation we're adding for condition J states, the applicant shall submit a long-term maintenance plan for Lawrence Lane with any commercial plan of development application. So that means that they would be responsible for maintaining Lawrence Lane per an approved maintenance plan that was submitted relative to the portions of Lawrence Lane that they control. Regarding the concerns for the truck traffic, since it's a private road, that is generally something that is worked out among the private landowners along that road. However, I do want to point out that, as you mentioned, Chairman Hickman, Olive Avenue is pretty torn up right now with construction. And that's why more trucks are being seen along Lawrence Lane right now. So a lot of those truck traffic will move back to Olive Avenue after the construction is completed. Uh, if I may, right now, the truck traffic has no relationship to construction on all of there is no construction on all of it on their uh, their entrance which is north of Lawrence Lane they choose not to use that entrance for whatever reason uh, and I mean I've got thousands and thousands of pictures so even their landscape people that come in and buy trees, uh, er everything that goes in and out of there, all their employees use Lawrence Lane and not their other entrance. Okay. Well, again, it is a, it is a private road, and we would expect that the neighbors would work out, and I would I would expect that the nursery there would operate in good faith, and uh, I'll hopefully keep an eye on that with with our group to to see if there's some sort of sort of issue that we can have a hand in, in helping work out, but that's, that's, that's an issue between neighbors, so we're just gonna have to leave it with that. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, thanks for joining us today. Okay, 
Um, I am ready to hear a motion on this item. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Supervisor Sellers. I make a motion to approve case number Z2019129, subject to conditions A through I as approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission with the addition of new condition J. Great. Okay, thank you, Jack. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. I have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay, thank you for joining us today. All right, moving on to statutory hearings. Uh, under Clerk of the Board, number 15, liquor license application. A is a new license for Filiberto's Mexican food. B through D is a permanent extension of premises for South Golf Course, Riverview Golf Course, North Golf Course. And item number 16 is a de-annexation from City of Glendale and annexation to the City of El Mirage. Uh, Fran, is there anyone on the line or having written comments on items 15 through 16? I have none, Mr. Chairman. Great. All right. Uh, with no comments, uh, the board will now consider items 15 through 16. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none. Motion carries. We'll now move to item number 17, which is statutory hearings. Clerk of the board, a 17 is an impact statement hearing for the proposed Tonka Vista Irrigation Water District Delivery District. I will turn to Supervisor Gates. It's in his district. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We do have a request from the applicant to withdraw the motion uh, or withdraw this item. So therefore, I will make a motion to withdraw for the applicant's request. Great. Okay, I have a motion and a second to withdraw the item. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, Fran, do you, it says if I, if there's any comment, would you like to make a comment about this? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, I believe Mr. Gates covered it. Okay, great, thank you. Still under statutory hearings, transportation 18 is a patent easement abandonment road file number PAB-0113. Are there any item, line or written comments on item 18? Anyone on the line? I have none. Deb, do you have anyone on the line for item number 18? Mr. Chairman, Madam Clerk, uh, no, we have no questions on line. Okay. Then I'm ready to hear a motion. The, mo or the board will now consider item 18. So okay, so I'll give that one to Steve Chukri, so I know that he's not sleeping. And uh, the second to... Beat, Mr. What, I'm sorry, Steve? Who did I beat out on the motion? You barely beat out Jack Sellers. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay, under county officers, clerk of the court, number 19, appointments. Number 20, uh, county attorney, uh, is, uh, 20 is victims' rights grant funding. Under sheriff, number 21, donations. We are gonna skip number 22 for a moment. Number, 20, number 23, federal equitable sharing agreement. 24, amend agreement with Arizona Department of Homeland Security. Uh, the board will now consider items number uh, 19, 20, 21, 23, and 24. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 19 through 24 with the exception of, which one did we skip? 22, we're with skipping, we'll go back yeah, to it. With the exception of item number 22. So approval of IT 19, 20, 21, 23, and 24. Great, okay. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, motion carries. We will go back to item now, number 22, which is COVID-19 detention officers and sworn stipend. I will tell, uh, I will tell my colleagues because he can't see him, Sheriff Penzone, 
is here and some of his staff is here and ready to answer any types of questions uh, that we might have on this item. Um, so I'll leave it to the board. Item number 22. Mr. Chair? Yes, Supervisor Gates. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a, an important item that we're addressing today, uh, specifically as it relates to our detention officers um, and uh, you know, generally the officers within the, the sheriff's office. We have uh, unanimously, obviously, this board has a great respect for what they're doing, what they do all the time, but particularly during this time with the pandemic and with a lot of uh, civil disruption going on in our community. Additional um, burdens have been placed upon them. Um, but at this point, I'm not prepared um, to support this particular item this early on in the fiscal year, right? We've just started the fiscal year and to actually dip into that contingency at this point, I think that that's not the right move. That's not the most um, prudent move at this point before we have a better idea of exactly the impact that this pandemic is going to have as we move into this uh, fiscal year. Uh, we need to have some very uh, hard conversations as it relates to personnel and as this fiscal year moves on and as we get a better idea of the economic impact. So based upon that, Mr. Chair, at this point, I would make a motion to continue uh, indefinitely this particular item so that we can get more information uh, on this as the uh, fiscal year develops. Okay, so you are making a motion for a continuance? That's correct. Okay. So I want to be clear, because you guys can't see him. I am looking at a publicly elected official that is standing up right now. So, uh, Sheriff, um, if you would, would you like to say a couple words? Yeah. Okay, come on up. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'll be as brief as possible. And, uh, and I would express this uh, to begin. Our, our private conversations were probably less polished, uh, but had a lot of passion related to this. Um, but as we stand here as elected officials and make difficult decisions, I just want to make sure that, um, that the organization is properly represented as you give consideration to this. And I recognize the burden that you carry as it relates to being fiscally responsible and running a, a major county to the best interest of our taxpayers and our, and our constituents. Um, the, uh, the entire nation and world has been affected by this. And many could make the argument as to why under these circumstances, we know that people have lost their jobs and their businesses and that many are adversely impacted. As a sheriff of this organization, I have an obligation to make sure that, is that my time right now? No. Um, that these men and women are properly represented as none of us expected to be um, in the place to try to manage a health pandemic as much as a public safety challenge. Uh, when I made this request, I make it with the uh, best interest, recognizing that it is a major impact. You know, an ask of this um, volume is a tax burden uh, in a singular, smaller fashion as we look at it, the individual benefit for the employees who now are at greater risk within the jails and out in the public uh, venue with our deputies. Um, the monetary amount for them is, is more of a, a gesture than really a significant impact. But as a tot in totality, it is extreme. So I would just offer that I recognize I'm making the request, I'm creating a, a, a dilemma and a dynamic that um, as we try to manage other challenges in our community and financial elements, um, it creates a burden. But I believe as the sheriff of the organization, I have a silver responsibility to men and women to do whatever possible. Therefore, if the board would entertain and consider, I would absolutely self-fund this within the budget that we've already been allocated and find ways to ensure that we run a, a lean budget for the best interest of the community. And as you all know, for the past three years, I believe in totality, we've returned about 30 to $35 million coming in under budget. Um, we are not wasteful, we are responsible, we are thoughtful, but I do believe that this action is appropriate because although it may be delayed for the best interest of making pragmatic decisions, the men and women who do this job every day are in the middle of it. And they need to know that there is some level of support and recognition that for those who did not qualify for the CARE Act through the parameters, that there's still an appreciation that they are in harm's way at a much higher level than um, than that of many other professions. Now, I can make arguments for those who are e equivalent, but very few exceed. 
Um, so I take the responsibility, I take the ownership, and I hope that you will give it serious consideration. We will be a thoughtful organization, as always, and be fiscally responsible. But I am confident that we can uh, give a gesture of reward and appreciation to our employees under these difficult circumstances, find a way to manage our budget to meet this. And quite frankly, as you know, I'm always transparent, maybe to a fault. Um, I fully expect that when we come in far under budget, or at least under budget again at the end of the fiscal year, I will revisit this request a second time to see if we can reward them again because we know we have a long road ahead of us. And I need to make sure these men and women in the morale of the organization stay strong, that there's recognition for their sacrifice and the unique dynamics. So I appreciate the time you've given me. Thank you very much for the consideration. Great, Paul. Thank, uh, thank you for being here and, and uh, representing your, your department. And there's probably a lot of departments that are, have forward-facing people during this pandemic that we need to uh, you know, keep track of, keep safe, uh, and keep in their positions uh, by helping the community. So I do, I do have a motion for a continuance. Um, do I have a second for that motion? Mr. Chairman, I, I will second that, uh, that motion um, with the, just a real quick comment. Um, and, and I want to thank the sheriff for bringing this forward and, and really just uh, bringing it to our attention as well. I, I hear you. I, I get it. And uh, uh, I know out of the, the six years or so I've been here, this was, I believe, the first, I could be wrong, I believe the first year as we passed our budget, we did not have a pay for performance. Um, and I understand why. And I, I was totally okay with that because we had no idea what we were facing in terms of the pandemic and, and financially what the county was going to be looking like. Um, but I do think that this is something that should be looked at. I think it should be at a broader scope, um, not just sheriff's office frontline employees, but we have uh, other uh, public health employees that have been working very hard over the last uh, uh, few months. Uh, we have our own recorder's office employees. Uh, that have been working very hard during this pandemic. They haven't, uh, they've been pretty much on the front lines as well. So um, I, I hear you, Sheriff, and I would ask that we uh, look at this seriously as, as we get through the, this particular uh, year and see what we can do to try to, uh, to, to help those employees that have been on the front lines during this whole pandemic. So with that, I will support the motion to continue this item. Okay, we have uh, a motion and a second. I don't see anybody that's looking, I'm looking for anything, other types of remarks. So with yeah, that- Mr. Chairman, I, Supervisor I have a I apologize. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I, I hear both my colleagues uh, loud and clear as it relates to uh, Mr. Gates's comments and Mr. Garrett's comments. Uh, all that being said, I, I understand uh, the perspective from which the, the sheriff is coming on this matter. Uh, the sheriff and I meet on a regular basis uh, to, to discuss issues facing the department, uh, whether they be helicopters, whether they be equipment that is better training uh, our deputies. And, and I applaud that. And I, and I think uh, that has all dovetailed into uh, us advancing as, as a major county in America uh, and having a, a representation when it comes to law enforcement uh, that is, uh, as we like to say, best in class as it relates to uh, having deputies that are well compensated uh, and, and also detention officers that are well compensated. I myself, uh, prior to Mr. Penzone coming on, met with deputies on a regular basis to try to ensure that they're getting what they need. Uh, and we found that they were woefully not getting uh, bulletproof vests and some other items early on. And, and so I, I applaud it and I, and I agree with it. However, uh, what we have always done is we've abided by a fundamental principle and premise as we looked at uh, budgeting. And, and Mr. Chairman, you will remember that uh, in my first year as a supervisor, I was not very popular uh, because I did not want to move the property tax rate uh, against some of the wishes of my colleagues at the time. Uh, and I think holding that line was important then uh, as it is now. And, and I say that because when you look at our departments uh, across Maricopa County, especially public health right now, the hours and the time that they have put in, uh, that of what uh, the sheriff has just stated with his frontline individuals who are doing uh, a terrific and magnificent job trying to uh, maintain our jails uh, and keep our, our Maricopa County residents safe. 
uh, do they do they deserve to be recognized, uh, whether it's through accolades or through uh, a stipend or a bonus? Of course, but many other departments do as well. And so, how do you write that rudder? How do you strike that balance, if you will? Uh, and we've done that through pay for performance. Uh, we've introduced that. We've done pay for, for pay for performance uh, for several years in my eight-year tenure. And so we have to be careful that we don't create unattended consequences or precedents that will may that may uh, make us trip and fall as we proceed. Uh, we do our budgets now, uh, hopefully to the penny as best of our, our ability. So when I hear that we may have surpluses at the end of the year. I question if we're properly doing our accounting and our budgeting uh, uh, to the standard that we all want to see. So with all that being said, I don't disagree with the sheriff and I applaud him for fighting uh, for his his rank and file members who, who protect our county each and every day in our jails. Uh, but at the same time, when we're faced with uh, cutting pay uh, in Maricopa County, uh, with the Maricopa County employees, when we're cutting our own budgets, all budgets across the board, which he very uh, nicely and great, gratefully uh, stood up and, and also cut his budget. Um, I don't see how we on one hand can do that and pay out uh, these type of stipends at the same time. Uh, I'd like to see uh, better days ahead where we can do something like that, but certainly those days aren't here. And as Mr. Gates indicated, if we're, ta if we're actually tapping into contingency dollars, those are not surplus dollars. Uh, those are, are emergency dollars in the, in the event that we need them. So uh, that's my view on it, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make sure I communicated that. Thank you. Great, thank you, uh, Steve. Jack, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman. You know, because this is the first time that we've discussed this as a board, I, I will support uh, continuing this so we can have a meaningful discussion about what really does make sense and, and what we can do to support the people that we really want to show support for. So thank you. Great. And before we vote on this, Sheriff, number one, thank you. Thank you for being here and, and, and discussing and, and calling out your, uh, calling out your, your staff and your people. Um, we, we appreciate their service, as you well know, um, through other budget asks uh, that have occurred through, through the years, not just in your tenure, but before. Uh, it's a, it's in, incredibly important service that your staff provides to the county residents that uh, keeping the jail safe um, and efficient and um, so I appreciate you being here and your staff to to, uh, to hear um, I appreciate my uh, colleagues comments this is the, again you know talking to Cindy and what this pandemic has done that we can't even take a picture together and be out here together about the, the great things that, that her staff is doing. Um, brings me to the same thing. I, I will tell you, I will support the continuous. What I, what I wanted to say is I'm deep, deep, deep into the budget discussions uh, since, since I took uh, you know, my term as chairman and, and framing the budget. I think there will be time to discuss because we, we don't know what the economic picture is is going to bring us within tomorrow or the next two months we might we might find out we're doing great and see if there's a, a place to move uh, in that budget but yes i we have to show that the entire county is extremely important and those of us that are in the jobs and especially front facing uh the the uh the county resident is important and there's there's a pandemic swirling so um, I would support the continuance. Um, it, it is a continuance to an indefinite time. I'm sure that it'll be something that comes up quite, you know, quite often now. The, the discussion is happening, but we've got to get through this budget. We have to see what the economy is doing, and we, we have to find out where we are at with our workers. So um, there is a motion and a second, uh, I've heard. So. Um, looking for a vote. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. So thank you, Sheriff, for, for being here today. Okay, we will move now on to, uh, still under Sheriff, uh, 25, an amendment agreement with the town of Cave Creek. 26 is funding from Arizona Game and Fish. On the judicial branch, number 27 is uh, personnel agenda and under Superior Court, number 28, appoint attorney Marianne Majestic as Superior Court Judge Pro Tem. The board will now consider items 25 through 28. 
Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, county management, county manager, Joy Rich, 29 donations. Are you making a donation, Joy? <laughs> Under assistance uh, of county manager, Leanne Bone, number 30 is CARES Act funding, budget reconciliation. The board will now consider items 29 and 30. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Supervisor Gates. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under county offices, air quality, 31, annual permitting report. Uh, under animal care and control, 32 through 35, amend IGAs and agreements with HLP Inc., Town of Gilbert, City of Chandler, City of Goodyear, 36 through 37, IGAs with the City of Scottsdale, Town of Gila Bend, and 38. Pets for Heroes program. The board will now consider items 31 through 38. Move for approval. Second. Great, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Steve Chukri. Uh, on, on item 38, I just uh, wanna call out one of my constituents who came up with these ideas and um, and I think that's what a true partnership is with our constituents who, who throw an idea our way and we simply don't just put it aside. We evaluate and look at it. And of course, there's nothing more important than our, our heroes and our veterans. Uh, and uh, so I just wanted to, to thank him and, and thank Val for always being so open-minded about engaging on these types of ideas and concepts and innovation. Great, and I just, uh, Val gave you a smile, so. Uh, thanks for the comments. Okay, we do have a motion in a second. Oh, I started saying, did we all say aye? Did we get that in? We got it in? Okay, no, Fran says we got it in. Okay, so moving on. Under uh, budget office, 39. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. They did not vote. I don't doesn't have the vote. Ruined it for us when he I, made I'm comments. sorry, I was starting to write it because I thought you were going there. My apologies. Eyes. Okay. All right. We're going to. Chairman, I'm like a mystery shopper. I'm just trying to keep everyone on their toes. I apologize. <laughs> well, thank you for raising your hand with that and screwing up my meeting. But we'll go ahead. Okay. Let's take the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. You got it? All right. All right. Moving on, budget office, uh, 39, budget and accountability policy revision, 40, contract with Greater Phoenix Economic Council, correctional health, 41, budget adjustment for donation of long acting injectables. Under environmental services, 42, administrative change to recognize new owner and lessor. Number 43, board of health fee waiver reimbursement. Under equipment services, 44, transfer equipment from Department of Transportation to Parks and Recreation Department. The board will now consider items 39 through 44. So moved. Thank you, Supervisor Gates. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Uh, second, Thank Supervisor you, Sellers got you, got you that time, Mr. Chukri. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. <clears throat> Under finance, 45, capital lease documents, 46 through 47, funds, transfers, and warrants. Under human resource, uh, 48, personnel agenda, 49, market ranges. Under human services, number 50, grant funds from U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 51 is actually, has been requested from the department to withdraw the item, so there'll be no number 51. And 52 to 53, amend agreements, and IGAs with Human Services Campus uh, and the City of Chandler. The board will now consider items 45 through 50, 52 and 53, notating that item 51 has been withdrawn. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 45 through 50 and items 52 through 53. Thank you, Vice Chair. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Thank you, Steve. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Human services uh, still, 54 through 58. Amend agreements and IGAs with Community Bridges. 
town of Cave Creek, town of Gila Bend, city of Surprise, First Presbyterian Church of Mesa, 59 through 63, is I, our IGAs with, town of Guadalupe, town of Wickenburg, city of Goodyear, city of El Mirage, and city of Tolleson. The board will now consider items 54 through 63. Mr. Chair, I move approval of items 54 through 63 with a brief comment. Great. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a motion and a second? Supervisor Gates. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Obviously, these are all human services items, and I just wanted to give a big shout out to Bruce Liggett and his team over there in human services for all they're doing to help people uh, who are suffering with the, the pandemic. You know, including the COVID crisis rental assistance program and all the programs that they're doing. So we're really grateful for their uh, fantastic work for these people who really are in need right now. Agreed. Thank you, Bill, for stating that. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under Parks and Rec, 64, donations, 65, agreement with Arizona Game and Fish Commission, 66, addition to County Fleet, 67, IJ with Town of Cave Creek. Under Planning and Development, 68 through 69, our resolutions to forgive stale dated building permit fees, extend conditions of approval. Under 70, uh, number 70, I'm sorry, is Maricopa County Aggregate Mining Operations Zoning District number two. The board will now consider items 64 through 70. I so move, Mr. Chairman, with a few comments. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Ooh, I'm going to give it to Steve Garrido. Uh, my left ear works better sometimes. Well called. Well called. <laughs> okay. I have a motion and a second. Supervisor Chukri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, as it relates to the IGA, uh, with the, uh, the town of Queen Creek on item number 67. Uh, you know, I think this is smart as we move forward to preserve areas and make sure that we're getting the best use uh, of these areas. And and I think that's precisely what uh, the town of Cape Creek is, is trying to do here. Uh, and I've got a letter from the Desert uh, Foothills Land Trust that, that supports our action today in, in supporting this. Uh, and um, we're interested to see where it takes us. Uh, so just on that note and on that specific item, I wanted to make sure I shared that with my colleagues. In addition to that, on item number 70, uh, this aggregate mining operation, uh, I think it's a mistake uh, with what is trying to be done there by literally blowing up uh, twin knolls uh, in a very well-established neighborhood. Uh, if you want to talk about uh, putting a cart before the horse or whatever uh, analogy you want to use, uh, this is just simply I think, bad government. Uh, or bad concepts and, and things need to be revised statutorily, in my opinion, as it relates to someone being able to come in and literally uh, just blow up and mine these two mountains uh, at the back door of a well-established neighborhood. So uh, more to come on this. Um, and I want to be sure that um, we do all that we can uh, to, to help these property owners uh, and, and, and do just uh, do just that and try and bring some common sense to this area. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, I have so with that, Mr. Chairman, yeah. if I might take this separately. Okay. Um, I'd like to continue it because we we do have constituents that that haven't given me their their final uh, their final ideas of how we're going to move forward. This is a multifaceted issue. Um, this this matter would pertain to creating a committee, uh, but I want to make sure I'm operating in the best interest of not only my my residents there and constituents, but also in working with some of the state legislators that I am on this issue. So, given that, if we can take item 70 separate, um, I, I would appreciate that. Okay, so let's uh, let's back up because I have taken a motion in a second. So let's let's go backwards. We haven't voted yet. So. Um, how about remaking the motion of uh, item 64 through 69? Um, Mr. Chukri made the motion. Mr. Chukri, you made the motion, so you want to remand that to uh, yes, item 64 yeah, I through 69? I would 69. amend my own motion. Uh, I, would, I would amend my motion to, or I would change my motion to, to suggest now to make a motion to approve items 64 through 69. Okay. I'll second. And still a second from 
the other Steve. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Supervisor Chukri, item 70. Yes, I would move that we continue this item indefinitely uh, until we can get uh, further understanding, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, I have a motion now on item 70 for uh, continuance. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Now under procurement service, 71, Southeast Justice Courts and Adult Probation, 72, Qualtrics, Competition, Impracticable, 73, Maricopa County Administrative Building, Restack, uh, under Public Fiduciary, number 74, Transfer Indigent Burial to Department of Public Health, Office of Vital Services. The board will now consider items 71 through 74. So okay, we have a motion, uh, Supervisor Gates motion and Supervisor Gallardo a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And um, Val and Leanne, uh, as this thing swirls 74, thank you for, for your hard work and it's hopefully helping out from horrible dominoes to fall in a different way for us. So thank you for your hard work there. Uh, public health, 75 through 80, amend IGA's contracts and agreements with Dysart Elementary School District, St. Mary's Food Bank Alliance, Deer Valley Unified School District, Arizona Board of Pharmacy, Arizona Alliance for Community Health Centers, Arizona Department of Health Services, number 81, funding for IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services, 82, agreement revalidation with access, 83 and 84, IGA's with Arizona Department of Health Services, 85, Purchase order to IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services, 86. Appropriation adjustment for emergency preparedness program. The board will now consider items 75 through 86. So moved. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Second. Second, thank you, Vice Chairman. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under, still under public health. <clears throat> 87, rescind and approve IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services. 88, memo of commencement to lease agreement. 89, grant award for Arizona Health Zone Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Number 90 through 97, agreements and contracts with Iowa College Acquisition LLC, Benedictine University, Banner Health, Valle del Sol, Dignity Health, Passport Health, Valleywise, and Mullen and Kinsley LLC. The board will now consider items 87 through 97. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 87 through 97. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Second. Second. Oh, Jack beat you again. Okay, I have a motion and a second. There's a time delay. Ask Gates. There's a time delay. I'm watching. Yeah. I'm watching your lips, and there is zero time delay. Um, so uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under real estate, number 98, administrative change to real property purchase documents. The board will now consider item 98. Move for approval. Okay. <laughs> second. I have a motion and a second. Thank you, Steve and Jack. A motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Still under real estate, uh, number 99 is City of Mesa sidewalk and water line easements. This item requires a unanimous vote. The board will now consider item number 99. Do I have a motion? Move for approval. Mr. Chairman, but this is in District 2, not District 1 as I see it. Just as a correction. Just as a correction. Oh, okay. Well, you both have made the motion, so you can fight over that later. So who, who wants the second then? I didn't I'll quite hear it. it. Okay, Jack is seconding, and Steve, you, you are the first. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Fran, will you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Sellers? Yes. Supervisor Chukri? Aye. 
Supervisor Gates? Aye. Supervisor Gallardo? Aye. And Chairman Hickman? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Okay, moving on. Risk management. 100, Settlement in Meyer versus Maricopa County. Under Transportation 101 and 102, change orders with Combs Construction Company, Inc. 103, grant funds for Traffic Management Center Regional Archive Data System Core Re-Architect. Number 104, Conditional County Road Abandonment AB-327. Number 105, Easement, Right-of-Way, and Relocation Assistance Documents. The Board will now consider items 100 through 105. Second. Okay, I'll give you a first on that one. No, thank you, Bill. I'll second his second. Okay, <laughs> okay we have a motion. Or something. I thought it was a motion. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Under setting of hearings, planning and development 106, planning and zoning cases, transportation 107. Patent, easement, abandonment, road file number PAB-0117. Under environmental services, 108. Proposed revisions to remove outdated piggery regulations. I have never seen that on an agenda. So, got to get to get to dive in. Steve Chukri, you get to dive into that issue. Um, Thank you. <laughs> okay, we will now consider items 106 through 108. So moved. Second, with a brief comment. <laughs> okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, so go ahead, Bill. So being, uh, be happy to chat with Mr. Chukri about the piggery, piggery regulations. We um, handled that as the Board of Supervisors representative on the Board of Health. We discussed that in the last Board of Health uh, meeting. So uh, interesting topic for later. I should say, um, okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Sorry, sorry, Bill, I forgot about it. You, I'm reassigning Steve. You, you can dig deeper into that issue. Um, consent agenda, clerk of the board, 109 one through 110, property reclassification appeals, approvals and denials. 111, treasures, collections and investment summary. 112 and 113, mail ballot elections for Rancho Grande Landerwood D IWDD number 24, Los Olivos IWDD number one, under no, number 114, tax abatement. 115, Salt River Pima Maricopa County, I'm sorry, Maricopa Indian Community Grant Application. Number 116, duplicate warrants. Number 117, the 2020 election canvas for Cahava Springs Revitalization District. And number 118 is donations. So moved. Thank you, Steve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under clerk of the board still, uh, number 119, secured and unsecured tax roll corrections. Number 120, Head Start monthly report. Number 121, stale dated warrants. Number 122, settlement resolution of property tax cases and claims. Number 123, CARES Act expenditure approval. The board will now consider items 119 through 123. Move for approval. Second. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Steve. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. On the addendum, elections 124, cancellation and appointment for special districts elections. School superintendent number 125, school district governing board election cancellations. Under sheriff number 126, resolution designation of applicants agent. Number on under county attorney number 127, federal equitable sharing agreement. Under board of supervisors number 128 is an amend Maricopa County 2020 tax levy packet. The board will now consider items 124 through 128. Oh, um, and Fran has her hand up. Fran. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On item number 125 regarding school district governing board election cancellations. To the two supervisors who are remote, I sent you an email this morning. Uh, this is a 
fairly fluid thing that's happening. These elections on number 124 and 125 with the elections department and the school districts, they can cancel the elections if there is no competition for the seat. But um, this morning I was notified that Roosevelt Elementary School District, which is in number 125, there was someone else who wrote, uh, filed as a write-in. So that has to come off of the cancellation list. So it's simply an amendment to number 125. Just so the board is aware, the last day to file as a write-in is today at five o'clock. So you'll notice that these agenda items also give both the elections department and the school's um, office the ability to file any amendments that may happen by five o'clock, anyone who files by five o'clock today as a write-in, which may amend this list. Okay. So it, for, for now, the only change is to 125, and it takes the Roosevelt Elementary School District off of the list of cancellations. Okay. Um, does that need to be part of the motion then? Yes, number 125 as amended. Number 125 as amended, did I? Yeah, I can't remember. Did I already look for a motion? Not yet? I did. Uh, no, I raised my hand. You raised your hand you... just in time. Just in time. Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of items 124, 125, 26, 27, and 128. And with the stipulation, as our clerk has indicated, uh, on 125, removing Roosevelt School District from that list. So as we know, as of 1052, the list is accurate until further changes could be made later on this afternoon. Sent to him. Yes. <laughs> he, he I serve nice. on a school board. He knows the drill. I'm I served on a school board. I'm sorry you guys didn't see that. That was okay. that was leadership right there. I tell you. <laughs> all right. Where are you? Hold that again. Uh, all right. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Blood control district. Oh, sorry. We will now research recess as the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors and reconvene as the uh, and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. Uh, under Flood Control District, number 129, personnel agenda, 1, 130, amend IGA with the City of Phoenix. 131 is a reduction of fleet. 132 through 134, IGAs with the City of Tempe, Town of Wickenburg, City of Glendale. Number 135 is a contract for Adobe Dam, Desert Hills, Apache Wash Area Drainage Master Plan. The board will now consider items 129 through 135. Move for approval. Thank you, Jack. Second. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll now adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and convene as the Library District Board of Directors. Uh, under Library District 136, Personnel Agenda, the Board will now consider Item 136. Mr. Chairman? Oh, Steve. Steve and Steve. We'll let Fran figure out which one. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Cindy and Jeremy, you have not been sticking around for that vote, have you? <laughs> Gluttons for punishment. All right. We will now adjourn as the Library District Board of Directors and convene as the Stadium District Board of Directors. Under Stadium District, 138 is the annual audit. Number 139 is receive quarterly reports from AZPB Limited Partnership. The board will now consider items 138 and 139. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 138 and 39, 139. Thank you, Steve. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Oh, Jack beat you, Bill. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Stadium District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Item uh, number 140 is the public comment period. Uh, Fran, do you have anything to report regarding public comment or email responses? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We did have a few comments made to the um, comment section. 
Uh, there was someone who wanted to voice his opposition to having an invocation at our public meetings. There were five comments um, referring to last meeting when the Falcon case was approved, that they were in opposition, opposition to that case being approved. There were two comments regarding animal care and control, one of them regarding the rescue issues in the Levine area and they wanted the board to be aware of that. And there was another comment regarding um, euthanasia at animal care and control. Finally, there were two comments that were in opposition to the mask requirement, some asking when this may end. Just so that everyone knows, those will all be printed and given to the board offices so they're aware of the comments that were made. Great, thank you. And is, is there anyone on the internet right now waiting to speak? Ms. Schaefer? Mr. Chairman, Madam Clerk, no, there are no uh, speaker requests. Okay, that being said, then we can move then on to item number uh, 141, uh, the supervisor summary of current events. So, uh, first of all, I would, I'll start off with Joy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm glad Cindy is still here because I just wanted to make a couple comments okay. to her and thank her for all her leadership and commitment to Maricopa County. I mean, she truly is an inspiring, driven leader. The culture she's created at the library district is one that is going to live beyond her tenure there. And I think we, you know, several months ago got to visit an all hands meeting at the library district and I mean, she has created a culture there where her staff is completely aligned with her vision of the, you know, the many things that you've talked about today. Um, working with Jeremy is, um, you know, the epitome of what succession planning is. And frankly, I think the sign of a great leader is that you create a, uh, an organization that can live beyond your tenure there. And Cindy has really done that. And I want to thank her for all of her leadership and commitment. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Joy. Awesome. Okay. I will go to, um, I'll go to Jack. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, several items I'll mention quickly. Uh, I attended the Intel Community Advisory Panel meeting, always fascinating to get updates from Intel as a major employer in my district. Uh, I also gave a, uh, uh, an update to the uh, American uh, Council of Engineering Companies, Arizona branch. Uh, I gave them an update on critical regional and state infrastructure projects that are going on with a lot of emphasis on uh, how disruptive the, the work that's gonna start sometime next year on Broadway Curve is going to be for, for our whole region. Um, I attended a Rittenhouse Road bridge ribbon cutting along with Mayor Barney. Uh, you know, a lot of things that, that we are working in partnership with uh, Queen Creek uh, to help relieve some of the congestion in that area that's caused by continuing uh, rapid growth, not only in, in Queen Creek, but also over into Pinal County, the, the traffic then passing through that area. But perhaps m the most important thing that I did, uh, last week I attended something called the Bridge Forum and I really enjoyed participating in this forum because I was encouraged by the approach uh, to get past all the finger pointing that people on the extremes are doing right now and, and really in, enter into a, uh, a discussion on how we can bridge, find a bridge to uh, bring people together and, and look for real solutions to the inequities that we're trying to deal with right now. Uh, I. I really uh, was impressed with the way the group is handling that. Of course, the people on the panels give very diverse opinions, but it's all then brought into a, a, a central focus where we're discussing rather than arguing. And I was very encouraged, and I will continue to stay in touch with that group. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Good job out there. Um, Steve Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, real briefly, I know uh, we have all been focused uh, heavily on the whole uh, COVID pandemic and, and everything we're, we're doing and our, our districts are, are relatively large as well. And 
most of the time we're focused on our metropolitan or the more populated areas. But as I stated before, my, my, my little uh, diamond out there in Southwest uh, Gila Bend, uh, just kudos to the, our county health department that has done so much um, in not forgetting this small rural community that faces so many challenges um, that, uh, that there are stuff that they can do. And uh, there's a small, I don't know, I think I'm probably the only office that gets it, but I'm sure, but there's a small paper, it's the Gila Bend Sun, and, uh, and we, we get a weekly publication that comes in. And uh, the, the publication talks a lot about what we're doing in Maricopa County, and this just goes to the work that our county health department is doing. Uh, talks a lot about our, our, uh, our, our, our mandatory mask, talks about testing, uh, talks about, there's a, there's a couple of different publications that are, talks about, uh, you know, should you have symptoms, what should you do, uh, should you start uh, feeling ill, uh, talks about testing, and, and for a small community like, like Gila Bend, these small publications go a long way. This is where they get their news. They, they're not getting it uh, any other way but here. And when you have a small publication uh, that is reporting everything that our county health department is doing, it just goes a long way. Like I said, there's like 2,000 uh, individuals that live out there that are facing the pandemic, and so oftentimes they're, they're forgotten. And I do my best as, as a supervisor representing not to forget that. That yes, the bulk of my constituency is right here in the metropolitan area, but we do have folks that live in the outside uh, out, outer lines of our of our districts and everything that we can do to provide the services. I know Cindy has done a great job just on the library side, but even now I, I pick up, I read this all the time. This is how I keep touch with what's going, really going on in Gila Bend. Uh, but I, and it, it's amazing. Every publication that's coming out is just talking about Maricopa County and our public health and everything we're doing. So kudos to public health for everything they're doing for Gila Bend. I totally appreciate it. I know there's uh, so much more work ahead of us, but uh, it just really shows you the great work they're doing. It's not just Maricopa, the metropolitan areas, they are focused on our rural areas as well. So thank you for that. Great, thank you, Steve. Uh, I don't know how Gila Ben can ever think that you, they, that you forget about them because uh, there's been topics. Yeah, <laughs> no, but there's been topics that have come up on Gila Ben with school districts and things like that, and you've thrown yourself at it. So. You know, if anybody out there in Gila Bend is concerned that they don't have representation, they have great representation in, in your service to them. Um, Bill Gates, Supervisor Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just wanted to say thank you to our Department of Public Health and the incredible work that they're doing. In particular, I wanted to thank Dr. Sunshine and Director Flanagan, who joined me last night for a teletown hall with the residents of District 3, where we were taking questions from people across the district about COVID-19 and uh, great questions that folks had, great engagement, so I really appreciate that. And then also wanted to mention that this evening, uh, I will be participating in the North 32nd uh, community meeting, which is gonna be uh, live streamed on the North 32nd Facebook page this is an effort that I've been involved in, a revitalization effort I've been involved in since my city council days. And we're gonna have uh, Councilwoman Deb Stark and actually Mayor Gallego will be on there. Uh, and just a great opportunity to touch base on all the revitalization that's going on. This is basically runs from the 51 and uh, North 32nd in the South, all the way up to uh, 101 in uh, Union Hills in the North. And uh, really exciting to see all the stuff that's happened over so looking forward to, to hearing from the folks there and what they want to see in the future. Uh, thanks so much, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you, Bill. Supervisor Chukri. Mr. Chairman, I'm listening to all my colleagues uh, and Joy, and there are so many things moving around at the same time. You, I think Joy uh, nailed it, that the succession planning, the modeling, everything else is truly uh, identified and demonstrated in, in what the library district just did. And uh, I echo those those thoughts and sentiments. I hear what Mr. Gardo saying. I hear uh, as it relates to CARES Act uh, funding and the important role our public health is playing, what Mr. Gates just stated, and then uh, with what Mr. Seller said as it relates to the bridge form. So 
just those very comments show the multifaceted nature of issues that are facing Maricopa County, our state, and our nation. Um, and while I think Steve Gardo appropriately said the kudos go to the team members of Maricopa County and our over 13,000 employees and the leadership thereof, uh, he's absolutely right. I echo those. We, we do what we can. We're, we're responsible for making sure the ship's going in the right direction, but they are certainly the ones pushing us and doing the labor to get us there. So um, I, I think it's wonderful uh, to work alongside all of you uh, and the great team in Maricopa County. We're not going to always get it right or perfect. However, we're, we're all rowing in the same direction uh, to try and do the best we can in, in the what's known to us anyway as the worst pandemic we have seen in our lifetimes and to get us through to the other side and continue to grow and prosper as a county. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, it's kind of funny, Steve. We're, again, we're on the same wavelength because I was just going to uh, reach out and say, Joy, thank you. I mean, uh, to be able to be involved as chairman right now, it's, yeah, you know, people ask about that. How, what's it like being chairman during a, uh, during a pandemic? And uh, the great thing is the horses that are they're plowing through the stream with, with us, it's, it's nice to, to be a, a part of it and to watch how this county is maneuvering. Um, I want to uh, um, thank you for the staff that you have put together. Uh, we, we move, we make decisions and move in incredibly fast fashion. These, some of these votes, as I pointed out to Val, I mean, the background behind these votes to where it's, where it's gonna stop problems or we've determined where log jams are and we, and we, and we quickly move to, to free that up. Most of the time it's assigning county staff to jump into the problem and, and get it fixed. Um, but the public doesn't see that because it's just a, it's just a one line uh, of people that want to sit there and be bored to death about what the titles are, but it's actually people that are, that are fixing these problems. So I want to thank you. You're putting together and have put together great staff. Tom, Tom was great uh, also, but it, it, it really is a reflection of your hard work in this capacity. So uh, thanks for that. Um, Cindy, we're gonna we're gonna miss you. I mean, I, I said it. Uh, we are we are going to uh, miss you out here. The the leadership that you have, but after attending um, after attending several meetings with your staff and and getting a part, it looks like they're losing the the main cheerleader. Uh, but I'm sure that you you are going to be involved. Um, so we, I wanted to. Also point out, I believe she is she here because I can't see with masks. Uh, for my colleagues that are not here, uh, uh, should I say Doctor Robin James? Or is it Miss or Doctor? No, it's Doctor. You worked hard for that. Doctor Robin uh, James is joining us. She is the new director of Animal Care and Control, and by saying she's a doctor, she's tr she's a veterinarian, and she has shown a passion. Uh, for animals, my my little daughter wants to be a veterinarian, and I said that's great. You're going to start with chickens first. Uh, she she might go into a different field before I can even uh, get her there. But I want to thank you. You've sat through this meeting, but this is this is county leadership at its best. We welcome you. Um, we are putting you in a in a position. Uh, there seems always to be turbulence in that area, and whatever the board can do, and what county manager and Val can do to Help make your uh, help make you a success, or whatever support we can give you, as as you go on and represent us uh, into some some sometimes troubling areas, but very a passionate area uh, that gets talked a lot about. So we look forward. I look forward to having a, a meeting with you. I'm sure my colleagues will too to to talk about what what has occurred in the last. Well, at least for me. Um, we were, I was broached with it almost when I took the appointment that Supervisor Chukri had a hand in giving, but we look forward to working with you and as you, as you create those leaders under you, um, it'll be it'll be fantastic. So, um, one suggestion I might make, because because we are now several months into this, I get to see my colleagues on you know, in the, in the video, they get to be at their offices not wearing ties during formal meetings. 
And I'm wondering at some point, can we get them up on video as we're making votes? I think that they need to be here, uh, not just, maybe not physically, but at least, I mean, they're the two best looking guys in the, uh, two best looking guys in the county and we don't get to see them at, at every, other, every other meeting, so. Um, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> what the public doesn't realize is we all know you're wearing cowboy boots and jeans underneath that tying coat. So I think Mr. Gates and I uh, are, are duly noted as being very professionally dressed. By the way, I got best dressed at Brophy my senior year. So uh, you're falling on deaf ears, Mr. Chairman. Oh, my word. Well, I know your mother still dresses you, and I, I have a feeling. I, I, I'm wondering if you guys even wear pants to these things. So, um, okay. Uh, that being said, uh, thank you all for joining us today. Good work, everybody, and we are adjourned.